Hey, Jamie, do you like being cosy? I do. And do you like staying cosy? I like that even more. Then just head over to www.staycosyclothing.com where you can find hoodies, tees, sweaters, and much, much more with a new line coming in the fall of this year. And just enter The Chronicles as one word at checkout to receive 10% off your order. And make sure you follow them on the Instagram at Stay Cozy Clothing to keep up to date with all the new designs. Remember, guys, that's The Chronicles as one word at checkout to receive 10% off your order. There she is. Ah, oh. This way, this <laughs> way. Big ball of fluff. Look, look over here. Look here. There, up there she goes. <laughs> like, where, where, where? <laughs> she's an Australian, a very confused Australian shepherd right now. <laughs> oh, bless her. She's lush. Thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Ah, I'm happy to, to, have, to be here. I'm kind of like, you know, when Helen said uh, you were looking to talk to me, I'm like, me? Who am yeah, I? Because we're trying to go out of the norm. We don't want to go for, you know, like people always go, oh, I'd love to get, um, I don't know, Delia Smith or something. You know what I mean? Like they, they shoot for the stars or something. But we like to talk to people who are interesting and, and do things like almost behind the scenes in a way. So, you know, because okay. you might have some phenomenal, st- Helen told me you've got some great stories and stuff. And I was like, sure. what's good? We like to, you know, think outside the box. Cool, cool. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So, all it goes, Jamie will do a quick introduction, um, and then we're just going to bombard you with loads of questions. All right. Sounds <laughs> Simple like fun. as that, really, yeah. Sure. <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, we all love a good movie, right? But the best thing about a movie, it isn't the acting or the special effects, it's, a, it's the story they're trying to tell. And today's guest does just that. Today we have another shining example of how never giving up and following your dreams can lead to success. So welcome to the show, screenwriter of 2008 Delirium, Lisa Clemens. Oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So first and foremost, Lisa, Uh how's your year been? It's actually not been bad. I had a lot of time to uh, be creative. (laughs) And I do work, I do work a day job because, you know, screenwriting isn't... uh, as lucrative as everybody would like to think it is, uh, unless you're a big name and never got people pounding on your door. So I do have a job at a school, which um, I'm considered an essential worker there. So they, they've kept me employed, which is good. Oh, that's fantastic news. So what, what is it you do at the school, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I, I work at a um, um, custodial office. What, what's that? Custodial <laughs> office? <laughs> I don't think just I've ever heard that. Yeah, yeah, just uh, like a... Uh, um, that's cleaning, cleaning schools and such. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, awesome. That's good. I suppose it's good because obviously, otherwise, I've, so I've been furloughed since March and I'm oh. ready to just do it. Oh my it. gosh. Yeah, yeah, it's brutal seeing these oh. same four walls every time. Oh boy. A neighbor of mine uh, started a business where she was a hairstylist. And of course, she was out of work for the longest time. Oh. And that's, yeah, that was pretty bad. Oh, bless her. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> So, Lisa, take us back to the start. Where did this love for writing and screenwriting come from? Well, it's funny. I never intended to be a screenwriter. Uh, I started out writing for a magazine uh, based out of the UK called uh, Screen Power. And it was based on uh, Jackie Chan and Hong Kong movies. And one of my first interviews was with uh, Andy Cheng, who was Jackie Chan's stunt double. And so I interviewed him back in 2004. And we remained friends, and then suddenly in like 2008 or 2009, he said, uh, I know you're right, but have you ever done anything with screenwriting? And I'm like, honestly, I had. I've done some fiction, and uh, I tried to turn some of my fiction into screenplays, but where I live, it's, you know, kind of rural New York. Who do I have to pitch to? So um, I said, yeah, I'll give it a go. And uh, he sent me the script that he wanted to have rewritten. And he's like, try this, see what you can do with it. Do whatever you want. Just keep the plot kind of the same. So I did that and mailed it back to him and hadn't heard anything from him for a while. So I was like, oh, well, that was the end of that. But um, <laughs> he got on Skype with me and I was like, hey, uh, about that screenplay I wrote. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Really good, really good. And so I was like, okay, so, you know, if you have something else like that, it'd, it'd be fun to do it. He's like, no, 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 you're my partner. I'm like, Excuse huh? me? <laughs> he has what? <laughs> So he wanted somebody to, you know, go over some of his screenplays and uh, work with him and, and write with. He really, you know, 
has mentored me. And uh, so back in 2008, that was how it started. And then uh, sometime around, I think it was 2011, he was golfing with Johnny Martin, who was also a stunt guy, but who started doing some directing and producing. And he had an idea. They're, they're golfing together. And he tells uh, Andy, I had this idea that when he was a kid, he used to go to this mansion in Oakland. And it was called uh, the Hellman something estate. And it was a really scary looking mansion. They used it in uh, burnt offerings at that famous house. And he used to dare his friends to go up to this, uh, the porch of this house. And none of his friends could do it in the middle of the night. You know, they, they, the walk to this place is like a mile through this woods and you know, just that alone was scary. So he's like, I wanna do something with that. I wanna make a movie like a, a found footage. And he's like, yeah, I got a screenwriter. So Johnny didn't know me. So he's like, no, I want you two to work on the first draft until I know what she's doing. And eventually he, he saw that he, he, you know, I like, he liked what I was doing and I got what he, he wanted. And so Andy was able to step back and I kind of took over the writing of, of Delirium. And uh, so yeah, that movie started way back in 2011 where they filmed it in 2013 and uh, had to go back for rewrites because they decided to make it not a found footage. And eventually it was put out in 2018. But, uh, and then from there on, Johnny would suggest me to other writers. He's kept me on as a writer for more things that he wants to get done. So that's kind of how it started. I owe it all to uh, Andy Chang. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So, so you fell. Did you just fall into the horror scene then? Thing there is it basically like this is what I want to do, or has no, it always uh, been a love of yours? No, I mean I, I like some horror movies, but honestly, that's not really what we were planning on writing. I've written more things with Johnny that are thrillers, dramas. Um, it just happens to be that that one was the one that we made first, and then oh, excuse me. Um, I also wrote a um, a like a spec script. Johnny Martin called me up and said uh, he was working on um, Men of Courage, excuse me, with uh, Nick Cage. And uh, he's on this battleship and he goes, hey, Lisa, I'm on this thing. And I see that they're, they're, they allow camping here. Like little kids can camp, scout groups can camp. What if a battleship was haunted? Now, don't write it so that little kids get killed, but you know, <laughs> old scouts. <laughs> You know, he's like, you know, don't do like Girl Scouts and Little Boy Scouts, but what if it was like a teenage or uh, young adult uh, scouting group on this battleship and it's haunted? So I took that idea, ran with it, and I, I wrote uh, Dead Wake, which did really well in some contests. And one of the contests had it so that you could uh, have it um, published as, as a prize. So it's now published and available on Amazon. Oh, sweet. What's that called? Dead Wake? Dead Wake, yes. Okay, I'll have to check that out. That's awesome. Yeah. You, there's, there's also a book called Dead Wake, so you have to look up uh, screenplay Lisa Clemens' Dead Wake. Okay, yeah, consider that a done deal. So, when before all of this, then, what did you read? What, what was your dream? What was your aspiration to be before you fell into writing for magazines? I used to work with animals a lot, and oh, nice. I was a vet. Yeah, I was a vet tech for a while. My childhood dream was to work for like SeaWorld. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> <Yeah>. way. <laughs> Seriously, seriously, I wanted to go you know, swim with the whales, and or I wanted to be the next Joan Embry. I don't know if you know, uh, back in the 70s, she would be on uh, Johnny Carson's show showing off the animals. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. I want to you know, work with animals. That's amazing. <laughs> and then I got married, and now I got two little animals. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you touched on delirium. Um, mm -hmm. So let's talk about, for those that don't know about the film, um, tell us what's, what's it about. Okay, uh, like I said, it was based on what Johnny Martin used to do with his, his friends. He really did have a group of friends called uh, the Hell Gang. And they would do all these pranks and such. And so one of the things they liked to do was go <clears throat> jump the fence into this museum, uh, which was uh, the, the Hellman Estate. And he'd put a coin during the day, like a gold coin or something, up on the porch and dare his friends to go get it. And they never could. So the idea was, for, was kind of born from that. So what we did originally was it was going to be a found footage. And so we had this idea that these kids were like, they want to be YouTube stars. And so they'd send the kid up with a camera mounted on his chest 
and tell them you got to go up to this um if you want to join our hell gang you know we're only 13 but if we might let a 14th in if you could do this challenge you get up to the porch show us the door show us you're up at the porch and we'll let you into our gang and so uh, this one kid goes and, and tries it <clears throat> comes back and uh the original version he came back but it, and it, they've edited it since that he just disappears so the camera's gone he's gone and they decide to go look for him and uh so they, they, of course, you know, since he's not, didn't come back, they have to go through the woods. And so the whole thing starts with them going through the woods, looking for this kid. And they find the camera rig at the porch and the door is a little bit open. And uh, they go inside looking for him. And of course they can't get out. And so that's kind of the, the theme of delirium. Yeah, and, saw, uh, sorry. It's on, available on Blu-ray. Oh, no, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little plug. I saw the scene um, in the trailer where I think he's there's one of them still on the porch and he turns around, mm -hmm. he's like, you know, I've done it. And then the ball bounces past him. Yeah. And that guy's- oh, yeah, well, yeah, that, was a, that was a little edited. That was two different scenes. But uh, when he gets up on the, on the porch, he says, okay, I'm here, I did it. And yeah. all of a sudden the, the door kind of opens up behind him. And as he's looking back, it just sucks him right into the door. Oh, I didn't see that part. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I just saw like a, a, like a ghost looking, um, uh, guy with a red bolster in his hands like there's no yeah. way out and then he's gone that's, that's an early yeah that's another earlier scene yeah they kind of edited the uh trailer together that was uh uh gravitas ventures oh, who did awesome. our, our uh distrib distribution and they put the trailers together and um honestly the uh the cover for it with the woman crying with blood that wasn't our original poster and to this day Johnny Martin is like oh I hate that thing I wanted you know the, our original poster was designed by one of the actors where okay. we had a bunch of the guys standing in front of the house kind of in the shadows and the house really is the star of the show I mean this thing is like it's, it's a character unto itself and so we had a beautiful poster with this you know the mansion in the background fog and then you know the, the uh, main ghost kind of in the back way back behind that and, you know large face and it was really creepy and scary, but for whatever reason, our distributors went, no, we're going to put this woman that's not involved in the movie at all and put <laughs> on it. And <laughs> let's, let's run some blood down her face. And apparently they thought it looked too gory with the red. So they changed it to brownish and it looks like she's crying chocolate. So good it's job, why, guys. <laughs> so why, why did they decide to change it then? I don't know. It's, it's whatever the distributors, you know, demand. They kind of oh. go, well, if you want us to, you know, to do this, here's what we're, here's the package we have, like it or lump it. So, but, you know, we're very grateful. I mean, uh, Grativas Ventures has done a lot of great films and, uh, you yeah, know, they've, they've put out some really good stuff. So, I mean, we're, we're grateful because it was hard to get distribution for an independent film like that. Yeah. So you were saying that, it was originally filmed and then it was changed and re-edited. When I was doing my research for it, I saw you worked on a project called Case 13. And it was that about was the, the Hell Club. And I was going to say, was that the original That was the original, yeah. Yeah, that was the, what we had the title for, uh, for the um, found footage version. And then when they reshot it and decided to do multi-cameras and so forth and give one of the, the guy who originally was the cameraman uh, in, the, in the show had to have a bigger role. So I had to write him some more stuff. So then they changed the name and I always kind of kind of cringe at the name Delirium because if you look up Delirium 2018, it's probably like three different films that have that title. And so I kind of wish they'd gone with something a little more original. Yeah, I mean, I don't, cause obviously with like, with me and music and stuff, with bands of the same name, people kick off and start to like, take you to court and all that sort of stuff. So I didn't realize that movies could, but I suppose there's only so many words in the English language that you could use to. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, like I said, I even ran into that problem with uh, Dead Wake. I thought that was such a cool name for this. And uh, cause Dead Wake is um, what, I don't know if you're familiar with boating terms. It's when a boat goes by, it's kind of the, the wake that follows it. And so long after the boat's gone, there's still this echo. And I thought that was a cool thing to go with, well, you know, with what I'm doing with ghosts and spirits and, then after I named it there and put it out there, then I saw there was a, a novel that came out and it had the same title. So it's like, well, you can't copyright a title. So, yeah. oh well. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to see uh, things you've written like come to life on the screen or something? Oh, How does... That's just the best. That really is. I mean, the first time Johnny gave me a screener to watch at home of one of the early uh, ones and I'm like, look at that. There's my name on that typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> 
the, uh, the opening credits of this thing are really phenomenal. He's got some really cool effects. And the way he does everybody's name is like, you know, you see a clock and they'll say Johnny Martin, you know, where it would say Timex or something. And oh, yeah. hands down to this typewriter. And there's, you know, me and Andy's name on there. And I'm like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Even that was a thrill. So, um, But what was really funny, when the movie premiered, uh, they did a premiere party in Oakland. Because, yeah. you know, it was filmed there and that's where Johnny's from. And I have a friend who lives out there. So I sent him off to go. So I couldn't go. And at the end of the movie, I said, so what'd you think? What'd you think? He's like, oh, I love that line. It was so funny where the guy goes, you know, you're a shitty leader. And I'm like, oh, thank you very much. I didn't write that. <laughs> 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 it was improvised. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll take the credit. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks like that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, I saw there was uh, four writers on this movie. So with a writer's room, I've always been intrigued how it, how is it decided who writes what and what? How is it like all We didn't together? really have a writer's room. Uh, what happened was, like I said, um, Andy was uh, kind of introduced me to Johnny and Johnny didn't know me from anybody. So he's, he's you know, convincing Johnny to put me on this project. So uh, Johnny's like, well, you work with her. So, you know, she knows what she's doing. And when I'm confident she knows what she's doing, then, okay, fine. So first it was just me and Andy working on it. We did the first draft, handed it in to Johnny, and then Johnny's like, well, here, Lisa, do this, 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 change this, see what you think of that. And so I did some rewrites on the original draft, and he's like, you got it. You really, you get what I want. All right, cool. So then John, uh, Andy backed out, and uh, that was his, you know, contribution to it was that first draft. Then when we did, went back to rewrites, back after, like, I think it was 2015, um, one of the producers wanted something different in a scene and I wasn't available. And so he put in a couple of scenes. And so, you know, we kind of worked, you know, I, I didn't even know he had done that. <laughs> all of a sudden it's like, oh, who's this guy? <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's a collaborative <laughs> field. And that's what I think a lot of writers get upset about is when you see a new writer, they're like, you don't change my art, you know, and that type of person is never going to work again because, you know, you got to collaborate, you got to work with people. And so, you know, it, when you, ha even if I had a spec script, you know, a script that I wrote completely and I handed it to a producer, it's kind of like, um, I, I like to think of it as I'm an architect and here's my blueprint. Now, just because I gave you this blueprint, that doesn't mean you can't t t change that window to a bay window, or maybe you want to paint this that way. That's your prerogative. Once I hand it over, it's kind of, I walk away. It's, you know, the producers and director get to do whatever they want. And with Johnny Martin's writing credit, let's face it, he's the director. And if he has a better idea, he's going to add things and he's going to take a writing credit or story credit because that really was his story. So that's why there's so many names in it. Nice. So you've, you've mentioned that you've kind of led nicely into my next question, though, which is always helpful. <laughs> Cheers. As, you, as I say, you often sometimes find out what, the final written project and then what you see on the screen can be different because you know changes from the director with the budget you couldn't afford to do what you'd planned or the actors might you know improvise something right Did the final project get changed much from that final script that was handed over oh yeah because like I said, the, the very first script was uh found footage and so you know it started with this party of these guys hanging out and trying to get this guy to join the or this kid wanted to join their party and uh, in the final film, that's kind of done as this, the kid who um, is the cameraman is editing together footage from the party. And so you'll see little bits and pieces of it, but you don't see the whole scenes. And they added some scenes with children that I didn't have in. Originally, it was just these five guys, the house and this ghost. And uh, they added in some stuff with the kids. They, he said to me, you know, we want to make it a little scarier. Can you do some things with, you know, uh, the kids are talked about in, the, in my script, my first script, but let's show them. And so we added some of that. Um, there were some, some uh, ideas that the ghost in the story should have this attraction to the guy who ended up, you know, the, the original cameraman in this thing. He should have some kind of attraction to her and maybe he, you know, uh, the ghost is kind of turning his mind, the, the, thus the delirium thing to make him think that he was the original uh, husband or something. So they kind of played with some ideas and came back to me and said, you know, let's, let's add this, add that, you know? So yeah, I mean, a lot of times based on um, what you need, uh, like I said, that, that uh, cameraman role had to be expanded 
because now he's in front of the camera instead of always behind it. Whereas when it was found footage, every once in a while, he'd say, hey, hold my camera and get in front of the camera. Whereas now he's like a full-fledged, you know, other character that you see a lot. So a lot of his, his scenes had to be expanded. You're not allowed to have um, children be killed on movies, are you? Is that true? Um, you can, you can show them not already allowed. dead. Pardon me? Can you, because you, I don't know if you can, you can show them that they're already dead, but I didn't know, I don't know if you could have them actually killed on screen. I'd never heard that. I'm not sure. You know, I'm trying to think back to some films. I know that um, with Cujo, they decided that they were going to have the kid in that survive, but I don't think it's a matter of rules. It's just a matter of, oh, nobody wants to see this kid, you know, yeah. meet the end that they did in the book. So, I mean, I've never been told that. I don't know. Other, other than, like I said, when uh, Johnny Martin was telling me about the uh, battleship one, the haunted battleship, where he's like, yeah, don't you use little kids. I think yeah. it's not so much a, um, a law or anything as a, ooh, nobody wants to see that. Yeah, I think it'd be probably put a lot of people off because be, I yeah. think I'd be a bit like, mm, nah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie kids, ghost kids, fine. Yeah, right? there, there, are some, there are some child actors I'd like to see, but... <laughs> 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 Let's name them now. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Young Ricky Schroeder? No, I didn't hear that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, what's com what's what have you got coming up in the pipeline? So I think COVID's obviously put a massive stop on things. Like, you know, least... I, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we've, we have a backlog of uh, uh, screenplays, Johnny and I. Uh, one that I really like and that he's been trying to get going is... Um, we had this another one that again back when we were still doing found footages we've rewritten it since but the, the uh, way he pitched it to me was like this we're going to see a camera move towards a picket fence and uh you hear motorcycles you hear all this you know and then you peek over the fence and here comes a motorcade and then you hear bang a gunshot and the camera goes over to this brick building and another bang and then also a third bang and the camera turns the other way and then there's the shooter on the grassy knoll and they see each other go from there. So, so I wrote this whole thing about, it's, uh, I think, what, what do we call it? Uh, project. Oh dear. Um, it's, I written it so long ago. I forgot what it was, but it, it's, <laughs> it's got another one's gone through a couple of, of titles, but yeah, basically it's about this guy who, you know, as when we had it as a found footage, it was supposed to be a, uh, an experimental camera. And he said to, to me, you should, you know, these guys could go, go in a close up and he sees the shooter, he see, they see each other and you know, they can hear this, that, the other. And I'm going, okay, wait a minute, 1963, there's no zoom. Super 8 cameras don't have sound. How am I going to do this? So mm. I went, okay. There happens to be, I, I live in Rochester, New York, where Kodak is huge. And in 1964, there was in um, around New York City, they were getting ready for the uh, World's Fair. Okay, this is an experimental camera that uh, has sound, it has uh, zoom, and they're gonna, the reason this guy has this camera there, there's a Kodak that, uh, that happens to be also in Dallas. He's getting ready for the World's Fair and they're gonna show the newest, you know, high tech Super 8 camera that has sound, has zoom. And so he's testing it out there. And that's how it, you know, starts off. And then he has to go hide this, this you know, new camera from these guys that want to want to take the film and take you know go after him because he's seen the, the shooter in the grassy knoll so that's one of them that we have uh that's stored clever. up that, like that. yeah that's one of them that we have stored up that we want to get going um another one let's see andy chang and i are working on one right now it's a drama about a uh, an autistic boxer and mm. the cool story about this is we started this again back in 2011 back when um michael clark duncan was still alive mm. and this, what, what it was, was um, Andy had been working with him, I think, on Scorpion King. And Michael Clark Duncan was so impressed with, with him and said, you've got to be a director. So Andy always vowed that when he became a director, he would write something for him. And so the boxer in this movie was supposed to be played by Michael Clark Duncan. And so we started working on it. And then about my first draft into it, not even all the way through it, the man passed away. And so I called up Andy, you know, because I'm on New York time. I'd hear it before he does in California. And I'm like, oh, Andy, I'm so sorry. Your friend passed away. And he's like, what? What happened? You know, I had to tell him. Oh, and so we shelved oh, that shit. for a long time. Yeah, we shelved it for a long time. And then he started working on some projects like Into the Badlands. And he met, um, 
oh gosh, what's his name? The guy who plays uh, Pilgrim. He's a uh, BAFTA winner. Um, can't think of his name at the moment. I could probably look it up on my phone, but uh, or I can get that information to you later. Oh, oh Babu Babu Sise, is that his name? And yeah, I think it's Babu Sise, the BAFTA winner. I thought you guys would know this. <laughs> But, uh, Not as so intelligent kind of, as we look. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're movie guys. <laughs> but um, so he he talked to him about the plot that we were we by then started rewriting it, and the guy's like, yeah, yeah, I want to do this movie. He's like, you got to be about three hundred pounds. He's like, I'll eat. <laughs> you know, he's, so <laughs> he's like, I'll learn to be autistic. I will gain three hundred pounds for your movie. I want to do this. And so we've been trying to perfect this and perfect this, and, and we've been going over it and over it, you know, un, unendingly. And he, he's so, yeah, we have such high hopes for this, and he really wants to get this, you know, a, an award-winning film. And so I can understand why it's taking this long. You know, I'll send him something, and he's a, a very, gr he's a great mentor. But, you know, I, I kind of have this feeling sometimes with him where it's like a Hong Kong film, you know, you, you think, master, I've done it. And he's like, uh, no, whack, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, back to the drawing board, you know, just when I think I've got it, it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. And like, so he's really, you know, he's, it's great to work with him. I've learned a lot. And uh, the, this, this movie is going to be amazing when it comes out, I think. You know, it's about this this guy who he works on this farm, uh, lives with his mom. His dad has passed away, and he has these fantasies. He's autistic, and you know, uh, Andy has a couple of uh, nie uh, nephews, and I think one of his nephews is autistic. And he used to look at him how the the boy would just look into the sky and he'd be happy and and you know, making these expressions, and he said, "I wonder what he's thinking about. You know, what is he seeing?" And so it kind of like, what if he's seeing in, in our in our movie? This guy's 30 years old now, but he goes into this fantasy world every now and again, and he's looking up in the sky and smiling and, and happy. What if he's flashing back to when he remembered his dad? And he, in his mind, he's two years old, so he's the same, you know, scale as his father, and he's, or you know, as when he was a toddler, I should say. And he's looking up and he's playing with his dad in his mind, and that's his heaven. And uh, the only person who can kind of pull him out of this fantasy is his aging mom. And so he's this boxer who every once in a while, you know, they got to keep his concentration. And, uh, you know, he has that, that wonderful fantasy world. And more than just being a boxing movie, it's kind of about uh, you know, a mother's love for her autistic child and what type of fears an aging mom would have for someone like that. Especially when it turns out that she's kind of the only one who can pull him out of that fantasy world that he gets into. That sounds really good. I really hope that gets made. I'd watch the shit out of that. That sounds awesome. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there any genres you'd like to try writing in? Like, is there oh. a, is there a comedy movie sat in your yes, brain somewhere? Yes, exactly, comedy. And Johnny Martin had me uh, talk to this guy one time who was going to do a comedy movie who says it was going to be like uh, another rush hour. And I interviewed with him. We talked on, on Skype and he just kind of went, no, you're not experienced enough. And I went, okay, well, how do I get experience if, you know, so I think, you know, I'd like to try that. You know, I've, I've started a couple and it seems like every time I try to write a, a script for myself, a spec script, I get it going and then somebody like Johnny or Andy or somebody that one of them get in touch with will get in touch with me and say, hey, we need you to write this instead. And so it keeps getting pushed off and pushed off. But yeah, I really do want to write a comedy. I think I can do really well with one. That's going to be awesome. Um, so where are, you, where are you hoping that all of this screenwriting, all these movies and whatnot, where are you hoping this leads to? Was, you know, is that dreams I would love to have this as a career. You know, yeah. it's very difficult. I mean, I've been at this for almost 10 years, and uh, they say that's roughly how long it takes to break in. So I've got one movie in, I've got a foot in the door. So yeah. <laughs> hopefully, you know, that, that would be the, the ideal. And of course, you know, with um, this movie that we have uh, with the autistic boxer, that's the one that we really want to see do something for us professionally. So yeah. we have high hopes for that. You know, I don't want to jinx it, but <clears throat> Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. That'd be awesome. Yeah, thank you. And eyes and toes and just doing everything. The lot, the whole body. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't bump into walls. 
like you say, like you're saying, no, I've got one under my belt. I imagine there's people that have been doing this for longer than 10 years. They don't even have oh, one absolutely. yet. Oh, absolutely. For sure. A friend of my husband uh, was a, is a guy who mostly writes, or excuse me, reads scripts for producers. And he's been writing for 20 some odd years. And he's only breaking in now with television movies that are on some you know, a cable network that unfortunately a lot of people don't get. But he's also found that he's found incredible success with doing short plays. And you don't make a lot of money with that, but a lot of his plays have been done by uh, you know, like these small theater groups. And so he's got people all over the world doing his little, little uh, one act plays. And so he's happy with that. And he's also, you know, starting to break in through television movies, but yeah, it's taken him like 20 years. So yeah, I'm very, very fortunate that, um, you know, happenstance, you know, I had no intention of being a screenwriter and then Andy calls up and goes, want to try this? I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of fell into it in a really good way. That's so good. Would you ever go into like TV or anything like that? Sure. In fact, uh, Johnny Martin was um, pitching or uh, I think he was going to pitch a TV, TV idea. I think someone who passed away. Uh, left him a bunch of um, some scripts and things like that. And one of the things that he was left was a um, an idea for um, a TV movie, kind of like Twilight Zone. Okay. And so I wrote a couple of episodes for that. And that that was in just before COVID hit. So I'm not sure where, where that's going, but you know, hopefully that's going to do something. It's very Twilight Zone, kind of more like a revenge Twilight Zone that this woman... Um, that's, it was going to focus around this woman who kind of like, if you think about, um, touched by an angel, I don't know if you're familiar with that, uh, TV show, it's an American TV show where this angel goes town to town, wherever she has these missions and always helps people nicely. Ours is a little different. She's going to go town to town and find people who are just assholes and uh, <laughs> horrible people and get revenge on them. So like oh. one of the ones that we wrote was this a uh, couple of cops who are in Chinatown and one of them is just racist as hell. You know, this woman comes up to him is speaking you know, Mandarin. It's like, help me, help me. And somebody just robbed my store. And he's like, oh, ching, 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 ching. What do you want? You know, some really nasty. And so she comes up to him and uh, eventually makes it so he can't understand English. All he hears is, you know, when, when, when he speaks, other people are hearing him speak uh, Chinese and things like that so it's like yeah that's awesome yeah, like some nice revenge thing <laughs> that's right angel fucked up by a demon i love it <laughs> right. there you go there you go <laughs> now i was doing my research this. this is completely off topic but okay i found out a little bit of trivia about you and i need to have some more details about this okay you're on david letterman with your dog when you were 13 <laughs> <laughs> yes i what? was <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've, like I said, I've always loved animals. Um, I had a really clever, well-trained dog named Cal, and uh, she was just amazing. And so we used to watch the David Letterman show, and back then he had a morning show. And they, they used to put an ad in the paper saying, you know, we still want stupid pet tricks. That's when, you know, that was his big thing, was stupid pet tricks, bring your dog on, do a stupid pet trick. And so I, I auditioned for it. And uh, that was a, a really interesting story of how I got to New York City for that was um, <laughs> my father was supposed to drive us there with the dog because, you know, it's hard to take a taxi. And uh, the damn car broke down. And we had to be there for like a 7 a.m. rehearsal. And it's like, oh, my God, we're not going to make it. I'm not going to go on TV now. And so my mom gets on the phone and calls a friend of us of ours who bred huskies and she's like i can get a dog uh, the dog on a train if i can borrow one of your crates so they had to rush get the dog and get the crate this dog had never been in a crate so it's like put her in the crate put her on the train walker blocks through manhattan through a uh, revolving door get her on stage <clears throat> she was originally going to supposed to do a different trick but since you know everything happened so fast we didn't have time to be there for rehearsal I just went with something I knew she would do, which was, you know, the, the fall over and play dead. And uh, did that, and it turned out she was the only dog that day who did the trick. The other ones, I mean, they had a, a guy on a, with a, a bulldog or something that basically stood him on the, on the uh, skateboard and pushed him across the stage. That was his trick. And Melly performed, I mean, Cal, Cal performed, looked out into the audience at the end. It was, I have a video of it somewhere. 
That's, That's awesome. awesome. I loved yeah. it. I was just on your IMDb and it was like, Delirium, case 13, was on David Letterman when she was 13. He's like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and another uh, interesting thing I did was uh, <clears throat> I, when I was still writing for the magazine, I got contacted by a, somebody who worked for A&E. And they were like, hey, we're doing a, um, a biography show on Jet Li. Would you like to be an expert and come talk about him? I'm like, I'm not an expert. I mean, I know a little bit about him, but sure, free trip to Toronto, go talk on TV. Okay, you know, I went and did that. So yeah, they, I've done that as well. That's awesome. Yeah, that's fun. So, oh, and one of my, my favorite, oh. uh, whoops, sorry, that you might not know about is uh, MTV, uh, 1983. They used to do this um, one night stand contest where you can go meet the band. And a friend of mine uh, put in like 300 postcards to try and win this thing, and she won. And so, yeah, I, went, I got to go on MTV and go meet men at work and uh, fly off to Winnipeg, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> and, God, that's amazing. Yeah, it was fun. I still have the platinum record that they gave us, and I actually still have the jacket, the MTV uh, baseball jacket. <laughs> that's awesome. Was it... Did you get to choose the band, or is it just like, who wants, yeah, to, who well, wants to have well, a one-night well, stand with Men at Work? Well, yeah, that was this contest was Men at Work, and we were really big fans back then, so we're like, yeah, we got to enter. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. So, before we, we've got some fan questions, but before we move on, Tom, have you got anything else that you haven't? Just one last thing is, did you ever think that you would be where you are today when no. you were younger? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, because like I said, uh, my whole dream was working with animals at the San Diego yeah. Zoo, and I love movies. I really do. My mom and I used to go go to movies all the time, and as you know, one of our favorites was Airplane. You know, love com comedies, oh. and uh, yeah, and because I come from an airline family, my dad okay. was a flight engineer for like forty years, and so we used to fly back and forth and uh, meet a lot of celebrities, and you know, I was wondered, you know, oh, I love movies. I love to see this behind the scenes stuff when we used to fly out to California, one of my favorite places to go was Universal Studios back when it was not so much, you know, rides and stuff, but here's the back lot and here's how they make the movies. Mm -hmm. And I like writing, I like fiction writing. And so this really combines two things I absolutely adore. I get to see what goes on behind the scenes and I get to, you know, write something for film. And working with Andy, a lot of times he'll send me a script and it's something he'll be working on like an action film. And I might help him you know, by uh, plotting out some of the action points so he could just mm. look at this paper and see, like, I'll write the action beats in blue, uh, the weapons in green, the, re the uh, characters in red. And it's like, it's so much fun. I get to read these scripts before they become films, too. And so, yeah, this is just you know, my dream come true, really. I mean, like awesome. I said, of writing in movies. I love it. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. And you get to work with Andy and Johnny as well. So, you yeah, know, they're awesome. They are so awesome. Complain at all. It's yeah. absolutely wonderful. It's like yeah, an awesome, I mean, awesome little team there, isn't it? Lisa, yeah. Andy and Johnny taking over the world. It's there awesome. we go. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I was a huge Jackie Chan fan before. And so when, uh, you know, when I was interviewing him, I was, I was thrilled. And then when he's like, I want to work with you, I'm like, what? <laughs> Me? I'm, I'm in like Podunk, <laughs> New York here in this, this little urban or rural farm town. You want to work with me? Okay. <laughs> I'm sure I'll wake up eventually. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm bored housewife going, really? Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable scene. So, um, like Jamie said, we've got, we had some fan questions come in. Um, okay. So, from Paul Downer, he wants to know, uh, does writing about dark subjects take a toll on your attitude to life? No, because I'm kind of twisted that way. I kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I really, you know, sometimes uh, I've got a twisted sense of humor, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people that laughs at funerals, you know, and my daughter, my daughter raises tarantulas, it's a, it's a good thing. What? <laughs> yeah, um, I used to be afraid of tarantulas, of, of spiders in general, and uh, so I didn't want her to be afraid of them as a child, and so I got over my fear, you know, I've, I've rescued them and held them in my hand and go, oh, this is okay, and this really is okay, and she's, it backfired on me tremendously. Now she has 10 tarantulas. So, oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I've always had a little twisted sense of humor. And I've, I guess since I know how movies are made, it's all make-believe. I know, you know, I'm, I'm more thinking, how can we, we make this effect happen rather yeah. than, oh, this is a horrible thing to, for somebody to go through. I mean, you, 
I, I, it's kind of funny. There's a meme that I saw that said something like, when I read a, tw a plot twist, it's like, oh, and then when I write one, it's like, yeah, you know, you just want to, you know, when, when I'm writing something like that, I just kind of think, oh, this is going to freak people right the F out. I love it. I'm going to scare them out. I would love to be able to sit at the front of the movie theater facing the audience when something like scary happens. You know, I'm that kind of person. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I'd like Ted Tractors in my house, to be honest with you. <laughs> they're really <laughs> not bad. I mean, they're, they're easier to care for than fish. They eat a, one cricket once a week, you know, they just kind of sit there and do nothing. So. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. <laughs> I suppose if they're more if they escape, I'd be like, uh, where's that going? Yeah, there's <laughs> one that she, she just recently, since she's getting better at uh, handling them, she got a job working at a pet store now where she has to take care of them. And so she's getting really, really good at it. And so she promised me that this one that she bought, which was, it's an old world uh, spider that it's a cobalt blue. And she looked it up after she bought it and then went, oh, look, this is supposed to be the most dangerous tarantula you can own. I went, now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, uh, she's promised that anytime she has to open it up to give it water or food, she's going to take it into the bathroom, put a towel under the door, you know, that sort yeah. of thing so it doesn't yeah. escape. Because we really just don't want it getting after the cats. It'll hurt more the cat and the dog than people. It'll, it'll give you a real bad fever but uh, it could kill a cat or dog. So wow. he's like, yeah, I'm, I, I promise I will not handle it in, without it being in a secure area. You know, gloves and the whole nine yards. Yeah, just hazmat suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'd be in there. <laughs> With the big, uh, the rubbish. The tongs, yeah, yeah, the yeah, tongs. Yeah. It's like, let me feed you. <laughs> I feel like we've just written your next movie, to be fair. Oh, yeah. Well, there was a movie <laughs> called Arachnophobia. Yeah. Oh, I remember that film. Yeah. <laughs> um, a couple of questions from uh, Nick Palmer. Uh, he wants to know which director would be ideal fit for your work if you were to pick anybody. Anybody. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, honestly, as a writer, I don't really worry about the director. I mean, okay. I love working with Andy and Johnny because, you know, they can, we, we have such a good connection that, you know, we're friends too. And so they, we kind of get each other, especially with like Johnny Martin, you know, he's very happy with the way when, when uh, he says, Hey, I need this, this, this. And I'll like, dah, 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 write it off to him. He's like, that was fast. I'm like, I got it. You know? And he's like, yeah, you do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and with, with working with Andy, I love working with him so much because he's teaching me. You know, he's so visual. Um, he's gone from being a stuntman to being an, an action director. And so he just is visual. He's, he's been taught by the best. I mean, Andy, uh, Andy's been trained by Jackie Chan, who edits in camera and can do all these, you know, visual ideas. And so I'll suggest something to him. Like, I think one of our early conversations, uh, we were talking about writing for, you know, I said something about, I know you're not supposed to write camera direction in a, in a script. You shouldn't have like, you know, uh, tilt up or, or pan over. And he's like, well, it depends. I mean, he goes, what if, if you're writing something where a woman walks in and, you know, the, the, there's a guy sitting at the, at the table and he has a wine glass in front of him. I might like it if you used to tell me you can see the reflection of the woman coming in the wine glass and then he reacts. Or something like that and you might have to go with some camera directions there i'm like i never thought of something like that and he's, he's you know, always mm -hmm. one step ahead of me yeah and so he'll write something or, or i'll write something and he'll go what if you do this let's do that and i'm like the jaw drops and i'm like how did you see that how do you see that in your mind like that you know so you know, I, i'm good with dialogue but he is amazing with just the action and the, the angles and how he makes me see things that I wouldn't normally see. So I love working with Andy a lot. I suppose it also helps when you have that connection with those people. So like, you know, you sure. could go for like the greatest director ever, but not have yeah. that chemistry. And it just obviously sure. wouldn't work. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so um, he also says, what franchise or films would you love to work on? If any, oh, again. any Marvel films. Oh boy, I love the Marvel films. If I could work on one of some of those. And in fact, Andy just finished working on uh, the new one coming out, Shang-Chi. Oh, yeah. I, oh really? The way they put those together and just the characters for it, I could I could have a lot of fun with some of those, especially some of the comedy elements in it. You know, the, the, yeah. the more lighthearted. I, I just love that stuff. That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> um, what sort of movies inspire you? 
inspire me? Um, I mean, some, it depends. It, any kind of movie that I watch where there's something clever happens, you know, where there has an interesting twist where I'm just yeah. going, oh, why didn't I think of that? You know, I could have done that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or, or, how did they think of that? You know, and, and on the opposite, sometimes I'll watch a film that is so bad and I'm going, if they could get that made, oh, hell, I could do better than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not naming any again. But... Yeah, no, 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 no. That. <laughs> but yeah, it's like sometimes I'll, I'll just, you know, a lot of films, my husband and I will have movie night every Saturday. We go downstairs and he picks out these films and sometimes I'm looking at them going, are you kidding me? They, th <laughs> they think that works? <laughs> and they go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose does it sort of like kill movies for you now that because obviously you write them so if you watch ones like that like does it sort of like kill it off you watching them you can't really get involved sometimes because... I mean the really good ones I, I'll get involved in like I was watching Run last night uh, it's a movie about a kid in a, in a wheelchair and her mom and this whole thing about you know it's very Munchausen syndrome and I was just into it into it into it and it had a nice twist at the end which you know wasn't too terribly predictable and so it's like, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll really, if it's really good, I'll get into it and just not even think about it. What gets me sometimes more is since I know Andy and a lot of the guys he hangs out with and, and works with, um, with stunt guys, if I'm watching an action film and all of a sudden there's a familiar face on there, that's like, oh, look, there he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, oh, there it goes. <laughs> like, oh, look, there, there's John. <laughs> What's he doing there? Yeah, no, I didn't know he was in this. Cool. <laughs> um, finally, he says, um, who do you admire that works in horror films? Ooh. Um, hmm. if that anybody... one's tough. I mean, I, I don't really think that way. I mean, I, I'm, like I said, I've watched a few horror films and um, a lot of people, just because I've got this one film out, you know, that they think I'm, I'm into the horror genre and I'm... I enjoy them, but I don't really, you know, get well, let's back go, into Let's them. go as a whole, then. Let's as go a as a whole. whole. Yeah. Um, Wes, uh, Wes Craven, is it? Uh, what's his name? The one who did uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Wes Craven, yeah. Yeah, Wes Craven. He's, he's good. I like a lot of his films. Oh, fantastic. That's, yeah. that's all I had. Wonderful. Now, before we get out of here, we like to play a little game with our guests. Uh -oh. It's called the quick fire round. We ask you six questions and you just got to answer them as quick as you can. It's okay. Nice and simple. So first question, favorite cheese. Oh, Swiss. Oh, I like how quick that was answered. <laughs> favorite horror movie icon. Freddy. Who would play you in a movie? Oh, um... Well, you know, when I was younger, I was told that Brooke Shields looked a lot, uh, looked a little bit like oh. her, so maybe Brooke Shields. That works. We're about the same age. <laughs> Favorite concert you've ever been to? Muse. So good oh. life. And we've yeah, I saw them in, in Toronto. They were awesome. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you be and why? Um, I'd love to go to Hong Kong. I've never been, and because Andy's told me so much about it, I think I'd love to go see Hong Kong and, and even like China, the Great Wall of China. That's that's on my my to do list. I've been to the UK, I've been to Canada and, and uh, uh, to Mexico, but I've never been to Asia. Awesome. And the final question. This de all depends. The answer to this question depends on if we even decide to release this episode. <laughs> Does pineapple belong on a pizza? No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. Hey, my my maiden name was Pondicia. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, good. So you, yes, you already know. Yep. It's fantastic. Yeah. Why anyone wants to put yep. fruit on a pizza? I never understand. Never. This episode I don't gets even really like spoiled. anchovies. Honestly, yeah, I'm not a big anchovy eater either. What? Right. Why? I don't like little salty fish. I like margarita pizza. I like basil, uh, mozzarella cheese. You know. Maybe at most tomato and onions, but not, I'm, I'm not big on, on fruit or oh, fish. That's, that's fair I don't know why I reacted so. I do apologise. <laughs> it's quite a vicious reaction, wasn't it? <laughs> Forgive me, Lisa. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> and mate, Lisa, you've been incredible. Please, before we get out of here, plug any social medias, any where people can get hold of you or whatnot. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Uh, Elklem71304 on Twitter, I think. And uh, Sluglines, possibly, on, um, on, on Facebook, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. 
Lisa, thank you so, so much. We really appreciate your time. Anytime. It's been fun. Thank you very much. You take care. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.